And we have won against ISIS. We've beaten them and we've beaten them badly. ISIS has directed terrorist operations targeting Americans. We remain vigilant. We remain prepared. We will come after you and find you. I don't think it's fair. And ISIS is an international issue that really need to be taken care of. Sorry, what's your name? Um, Ibrahim. Ibrahim Agid. Where are you from? From Leicester. From Leicester. And do you think um, ISIS could come back again? This is the story of the ISIS camps. Push to breaking point. In 2019, ISIS was defeated and worldly celebrated. The ISIS caliphate has been decimated. Nobody thought it was possible to do it this quickly. But three years later, we're in northern Syria, only to find that's far from the truth. <laughs> Fighting ISIS has changed now. They operate secretly, and thousands of their suspected members are held in prisons across the region, which are basically falling apart. And as governments around the world refuse to take their suspected ISIS members back, the terrorist organization has clocked an opportunity. We've traveled from the UK to Syria, and first up, we're in Haska. This is the SDF and they're just about to go on a patrol to look for ISIS super cells. ISIS still live here in secret. They attack and then disappear. And so the SDF, which largely controls this part of northern Syria, are the ones left guarding this violent terrorist organisation. How dangerous are the ISIS super cells in this region? Oh, He's talking about Hasaka Prison Break. It holds thousands of suspected fighters. And in January 2022, ISIS launched their biggest attack in years. A truck bomb blasted a hole in the wall of this Syrian prison. British and American forces were brought in and it took 10 days to regain control. More than 500 people died and it's predicted hundreds of prisoners escaped, free to rejoin ISIS and fight again. Journalists haven't been allowed inside since the attack, but we're one of the first to be let in to speak to a suspected British ISIS member. I'm Lucy, I'm a British journalist. Sorry, what's your name? Um, Ibrahim, Ibrahim Agid. Where are you from? From Leicester. From Leicester. This is Ibrahim. When he was 21, he left to join ISIS. And do you think um, ISIS could come back again? Um, I think they've been significantly weakened. Whether they have the ability to resurge or not, I'm not sure. I've been completely, uh, I've been completely isolated for like nearly four years now. I haven't seen the news outside. I don't know what's happening. But you know what's going on inside. I think these people, they are, they've basically lost hope. So I think this is what basically pushes them to to do what they're doing, basically. So the longer they're in here, the more ISIS will continue? I don't know. Whether you can completely rid the world of, this, um, of these groups, it's a very difficult task. I'm not sure, to be honest. Do you want to be repatriated home? Of course, yeah. What do you think would happen when you got home? I believe I'll be subject to the justice system, but I'm ready to face the music and, uh, 
I believe it's my right basically to go back home. Yeah. Now we're heading up north to meet the women and children living in prison camps and the forces guarding them from ISIS. I've got a Kit Kat stuck in my teeth. A um, big part of this process is just basically driving around, <laughs> which I don't actually mind too much, to be honest. But there's um, checkpoints like every mile, would you say? No, no, it changes. That's, that's wrong. So no, there's not a checkpoint every mile. Feels like there's a checkpoint every mile. So there's a lot of sitting around in traffic, which is fine when you have a Kit Kat. This is the YPJ, the Women's Kurdish Protection Unit, and they had a huge part in fighting and bringing down ISIS. And they basically now provide that same support in the ISIS detention camps. This is Netawi. She joined the YPJ because she wanted to defend her country from ISIS. We know there are lots of children in those camps who are around those ideas of ISIS. Do you think that we could see the next generation growing up of ISIS in those camps? So we're on our way to Roj camp, but it's my fourth day going in. I've been going back and forth getting to know some of the women there. So hopefully we're going to sit down and do an interview. There you go. And it wasn't just men. Thousands of women and children travelled over to Syria to join ISIS. Including Hodama Thana. She was 20 when she left America and is now held here in Roj camp. And ISIS is very much still like a big threat here. ISIS keeps threatening even this camp and saying that one day we will free you and one day we will come help and attack the administration and stuff and nobody wants to be saved by them. You know, everyone wants to go home. Not everyone, but most, most people I talk to, we just want to go home. We don't want to be saved by them, you know. Do you worry that that will happen, that ISIS will? I, I feel like I have enough hope in the system that that won't be able to be able to happen because of the strong security around us. And I, I, it is still scary to think that ISIS would, could do something even inside the, the camp, you know. There's another bigger and more violent prison camp in the area. It's called Al Hol. And in November 2022, two young girls were killed. Their bodies were found with stab wounds in a sewage ditch. They were sisters. They're two of the many children who have died in these camps. And the UN has warned this should be a wake-up call to the governments of these women and children and for them to be taken home. Countries like Australia, France and Germany have chosen to bring women and children home. But countries like the UK have largely banned people from returning. That leaves us with seven years a Syrian woman and a victim of this war. She helped women like Hodder when she decided to leave ISIS, but also Shamima Begum, who made headlines around the world when at 15, she decided to leave London to join ISIS in Syria. I think like they should come back to their country in the first place. They belong somewhere. It's not like they just come from the, they come from Mars and they joined ISIS. They belong somewhere. And what brings them here happened to them there. What brings Shamima here, 
she was in the UK in the first place when she was like radicalized, deciding to come to ISIS, to join ISIS in Syria. What do you think should happen with the women in the camp? Uh, I think they all should come back to their countries. I think they should go to a court. I think they should go through a program with specialists. The most important is the kids. Mm. They need to go back home. They need to have a healthy house. They need to have a healthy environment. They need to be in a normal life again. Because if nothing changes right now and, and the women and children just stay here, do you worry about what that could mean in terms of the next generation of ISIS? Yes, of course. Some of the women will teach their kids what they learned from ISIS and they would create the next generation of ISIS. And the women that they are regretting, they cannot provide their kids a healthy environment. They are not going to be normal. Mm. It's, it's very difficult to be normal in this kind of circumstances. And do you think it's fair that it's been left to people like you to help help sort the situation out? It's really unfair. And ISIS is an international issue that, so that it really needs to be taken care of. When we got back home, we contacted both the UK and US governments. We asked them, how worried should we be about ISIS right now? And will there be a time when they're not a threat? Well, both countries said they were committed to tackling the threat of ISIS. And the US made it clear it will be a civilian effort, so the work of the people in Syria. So, as far as we know, the situation looks like it will probably stay the same. Foreign prisoners in unstable prisons, protected by guards that are asking for help. And with ISIS fighters all around, waiting for their next opportunity to attack. Get it right now. Look, you waiting, I've been patient. The clock is racing. I can't handle no time wasted. It's a whole lot of time in the day. We can put it to use or let it waste away, huh? What do we do with the life that we've been given? Find out what you like, what you want, just stick with it. Just make a decision, regardless of circumstances, you gotta roll with it. They told me, ask for it, work toward it, and you get it. Only looking forward, the past is already written. Looking to the future, each day I'm working to get to my destination. I know it takes time, I know it takes patience, but one day I'll be facing everything I ever wanted. It means much more when you know you work for it. Turning my dreams into real life scenes, from thoughts and emotions into real life things. More